I have a cat named Big Orange. Originally, we lived together in harmony without any issues. But one day, unexpectedly, I heard its inner voice. I heard it think, Master, let me conquer this land for you. I'll give you a sweet pure love. My cat has recently been going out to fight in the mornings and coming back with injuries in the evenings to lick its wounds. This conclusion came after observing it for three or four days, because before, with its thick fur, the wounds were not easy to see. After licking its fur every day and then falling asleep, I thought it was just tired from playing. But today's battle didn't go well at all. Big Orange had a bald spot, it cursed and walked past me, ignoring my horrified gaze, and lay down on the cushion to lick its fur. Because for a split second, I heard a voice coming from it. Damn, I didn't get to settle the score with that dumb rabbit this time. Next time, I'll make it clear who the boss is around here. I was speechless. I pinched my thigh, deeply suspecting I was hallucinating from exhaustion. Dig Orange lazily flicked its tail and lay down. And the voice came again. But that dumb rabbit's owner is pretty cute. I wonder if she would mind having a sweet romance with my brainless owner. I was speechless. Really. Thanks going out to fight but still worrying about my lifelong issues. I sat back on the sofa in a daze, finally realizing that I could hear my cat's inner voice, to be precise. It's inner voice, because I heard nothing from the cactus I kept or the stray cats downstairs. Big Orange is very nosy, it stayed up all night replaying the fight. When it kicked me, I should have bounced and swiped at it. Mistake. Mistake. Its eyes are really beautiful. No. No. Next time I can't hold back. Big Orange. You need to be the boss of this area. You can't be so indecisive. I couldn't stand it anymore. And threw a pillow at it. Shut up. It's the middle of the night. And your dad is trying to sleep. The voice paused. And I heard Big Orange say in my half-asleep state. Scared me to death. Turns out it was just a dream. The next day. After breakfast. I was about to go out. When I saw Big Orange lazily walking over. Seemingly waiting for me to open the door so we could go out together. I raised a finger and shook it at it, meow. Big Orange looked at me with its big amber eyes, confused. I picked it up and placed it in front of the mirror so it could see the bald spot on its body. Meow. Big Orange's fur stood on end, and its inner voice almost lifted the roof. Damn stupid rabbit, it plucked me bald. I almost laughed at its frustrated and regretful chubby face, suppressing my smile and said, You're not allowed to go out today. Big Orange's body stiffened and it clung to my pants. Meowing in disbelief, Master, you can't do this, Master. Do you know how important today is? Today is the day I settle the score with that rabbit and become the boss. This foolish master is ruining my plans. Serving a foolish master is the greatest pain in a cat's life. I almost couldn't hold back my smile, pretending not to understand its meaning. All right, stop biting. I'll buy you some fur growth ointment when I get home from work, meow. I patted the dejected big orange and ruthlessly closed the door. However, I underestimated it. It sneaked out through the balcony and went to the neighbor girl's house. The girl thought it had accidentally gotten out and opened the door for it. Big orange turned back and meowed gratefully. Don't worry. Once I become the boss, I'll reward you with a hundred good mice. When I got home, there was a big poster of big orange's head on the unit door. It said that this cat had bad behavior, went into someone else's house, and fought their rabbit. Now it's being held, waiting for its owner to bail it out. I was furious but resignedly followed the address on the poster to the next community. I live in a high-end apartment, but the next community is a standalone villa area. Every inch of land is precious. I took a few deep breaths at the door, thinking I must teach Big Orange about the dangers of society when I get back, and then rang the doorbell. Click, the door opened from the inside. I looked down and saw her long legs under a black puffy skirt and a gray knitted short sleeve top. Hello, I said with a smile. Looking up politely, I'm the owner of Big Orange. The girl had a very cute and delicate face. Her skin was fair with a faint blush, and her slightly wavy long hair had a white hair accessory, making her look especially sweet. I met her gaze, and her clear eyes reflected my figure. Orange cat, the girl blinked and asked. I. Yes, that orange cat, the girl nodded, stepped aside, and said, Come in, there are shoe covers on the cabinet. I sat awkwardly on the sofa, with big orange playing dead at the other end. She poured me a glass of water and placed it on the table, then said, Willow, George, she was holding a rabbit, which looked pitifully weak, curling up in her arms, seeing my gaze fall on it. Big orange suddenly jumped over, 
and its inner voice rang in my ear. Master, don't believe it. It's a pretentious coquette. When it slapped me with its ears, it wasn't like this. Master, don't be fooled by it. I pressed down on Big Orange's neck and smiled at Willow. What a cute rabbit. Willow looked up, her eyebrows curved, and also smiled lightly at me. Don't be fooled by it. It's quite naughty. The rabbit seemed to understand, kicking its owner with its back leg, revealing a bald patch on its fur. I immediately apologized sincerely. I'm really sorry. Is there any injury on your rabbit? I can accompany you to the hospital for a checkup, and I'll cover all the costs. Master, be smarter. You can't just be swayed by a pretty face. This rabbit is pretending. It even plucked my fur. Dig Orange struggled hard, but I pressed it down with one slap. No need. I contacted a friend who is a pet doctor. There's nothing serious. Willow paused. But you're Big Orange, I said. Willow covered her mouth and chuckled then said, but your big orange might have some psychological issues. I looked at her in confusion. Willow explained, when it was fighting with the rabbit, it accidentally fell into the rabbit's litter box. I looked at big orange with a speechless expression. Master, don't listen. Big orange struggled violently, clearly recalling something it didn't want to remember. Its entire tail puffed up. This rabbit, she's lying. She ambushed me. It's not fair. She even stepped on me. Big Orange rubbed against me. Looking aggrieved, I took a deep breath, my hand trembling as I petted Big Orange, looking into its watery eyes, I couldn't help but scold myself. It's your cute rebellious child. How can you abandon it just because it fell into the toilet? Big Orange's chubby body was pushed away by me, and it looked incredulous. I mumbled, hot. Big Orange seemed to turn to stone, its head drooping dejectedly. If I couldn't hear its inner voice, I would have scolded myself. Master, are you despising this old servant? Think of all the hard work and sacrifices I've made for our home, truly giving my all until the very end. Yet, you despise me over this trivial matter. You've hurt my loyal heart. I advise you to wake up and pet me more. Otherwise, I won't respond to you in the future. Then, it vividly reenacted in its mind. Dig Orange, Big Orange, what's wrong? You haven't smiled since I pushed you away that day. I'm sorry. Big Orange, I was speechless. My toes curled in embarrassment, Willow said. I gave Big Orange a bath. It's very clean now. Thank you. I curled my toes in embarrassment and said, I'm really sorry for the trouble. How much was the bath? I'll transfer the money to you, Willow shyly said. That's not necessary, but I do have a small favor to ask. I blankly said, ah. Willow looked at me apologetically and said, I just got a new job and I need to travel frequently. I'm worried about leaving the rabbit alone at home. Can it stay with you for a few days? Worried I might refuse, she quickly added with a smile. It's okay if it's inconvenient. I just thought the rabbit and Big Orange could keep each other company and pass the time. I was dazzled by Willow's smile and agreed before I realized it. Ah, oh, the dangers of beauty. Big Orange couldn't stay quiet alone at home. And now with the rabbit it has a grudge against, the house might not survive. I hesitantly said, but I also work so the house might be empty except for them. Willow softly said, That's okay. Just prepare food for the rabbit before you go to work. I'll pay you daily. 200 you on a day. Is that okay? I looked at her sincerely and quickly refused. How can I accept that? I've always wanted to keep a rabbit since I was a child. You found the right person. Big Orange looked at me. Bewildered. Willow squeezed the rabbit's body, her eyes sparkling with laughter. I thought, I'm hungry but don't know what to eat. Maybe I'll taste the bitterness of love. We exchanged WeChat contacts, and the next morning at 8, Willow knocked on my door. She had messaged me before leaving, but I was deep in a sweet dream and didn't see it. The knocking woke me up. My brain still in a fog. I hated getting up, feeling like my coffin lid was being pried open. In a moment of forgetfulness, I opened the door without putting on a shirt. The door opened. And Willow looked completely different from yesterday. She was wearing a dark blue suit jacket over a white fitted top and a light blue high-waisted skirt that perfectly outlined her slender figure. At that moment, she was holding a snow white rabbit. For a moment, I thought I saw change, the goddess of the moon, as a domineering CEO. Did I wake you? I'm sorry. Willow's gaze lingered on me for a moment before quickly averting her eyes, her lips pressing together. Her ears turned visibly red. My brain hadn't caught up, but Big Orange's inner voice came first. How innocent the dumb rabbit's owner is. 
Meeting my master is like a lamb entering a wolf's den. I was speechless, grabbed a random shirt from the entrance, and put it on, giving an awkward smile and explaining, I had trouble sleeping last night and woke up late today. As I reached out to take the rabbit from Willow's arms, Big Orange's inner voice said, Nonsense. You were up late watching cooking videos and grinning like a fool. Willow handed the rabbit to me, and I looked back at Big Orange with a gentle gaze. Big Orange was puzzled but instinctively raised its tail. What are you looking at? Cats can't have bad intentions. Willow had also brought the rabbit's foo. I glanced at it. All imported brands, each bag costing thousands. There were also toes and a litter box. Thank you for taking care of it these days, Willow said. The rabbit's droppings can be a bit smelly. Text me after work, and I'll have someone come to clean up. Seeing me nod, she smiled and lightly poked the rabbit's chubby body. Be good. Bunny, don't disturb Uncle Juan. Uncle, damn it, who can understand this? Totally irresistible. My facial muscles had a mind of their own. Uncontrollably smiling. Willow's phone rang in her pocket. She said, I have something urgent. I have to go. Please take care of the rabbit. I nodded, watching her leave in the elevator. Once the door closed, Big Orange stared at the rabbit, a mocking smile on its face. I smiled at the rabbit in my arms. If anything happens to the rabbit, you'll see what a true kingpin is. You'll be buried with it. Big Orange's smile vanished. According to the law of conservation of smiles, the rabbit's mouth curled up. Big Orange, furious, almost swung its tail. Looking at me with resentment, I was ready to fight to the death. Why did the emperor surrender? The rain in my heart is as heavy as the one that saved Simon Ye at Upper Valley. The rabbit lazily rubbed against me, casting a smug glance at Big Orange. Big Orange rubbed its chubby paws. You think the master will always be home. There will be times when he's at work, satisfy. It saw the rabbit's ears stiffen and thought. Reputation has its ups and downs. I used to be a rogue. Now I'm just a pure pervert. I was speechless. After feeding Big Orange, I started setting up a home for the rabbit. The rabbit's and Big Orange's beds were on opposite sides of the room, with me in the middle watching variety shows on the sofa. All was peaceful until I went to get my takeout. When I returned, the rabbit was covering its eyes with its paws. Looking at me pitifully, Big Orange lowered its raised paw and me out twice. Master, see how well I take care of our new friend. I walked over, grabbed Big Orange by the collar, and lifted it off the rabbit, its legs kicked helplessly in the air. Meow. I turned and squatted to look at the rabbit. Its fur was snow white, its eyes like pure red gems, as beautiful as its owner. The rabbit rubbed its head against my palm, making my heart flutter with excitement. So cute. That night I dreamt of Willow, a pleated skirt, dressed like a college student, with black hair and rabbit ears, her eyes black and white, lying on the ground. I was taking care of her like Big Orange. George, she called softly, looking down. I woke up with a start, patting my face. George, your dreams are really perverted. Next to me, Big Orange, half asleep, heard the commotion, awkwardly climbed into bed, and rested a paw on my hand. Big Brother had a nightmare. Don't be afraid. When I become the boss of this area, I'll get that dumb rabbit's owner for you. Just don't know if she minds that you're brainless. I was speechless, shaking Big Orange awake. I anxiously said, Big Orange, what's wrong? Had a nightmare. It's okay. Sleep. Sleep. Big Orange was confused but thought. Master is really gentle. After a day of lying flat, I went to work, and I started going crazy. Specifically, I posted eight WeChat moments updates in one day, with such a low salary. It's only fair to make mistakes at work. After all, you get what you pay for. I always feel my personality is not suited for work, only for receiving a salary. Just after posting. Willow transferred 250 yuan to me on WeChat. Damn, she sent this amount. Could it be that she thought my moments updates were hinting at her for money and got angry? But the next second, Willow's message came. It's very hot today. Thank you for taking care of the rabbit. The extra money is for a matcha ice cream to refresh yourself. I mean, where can you find such a good girl? She even ordered ice cream for me. Is this just ice cream? No. It's the love that's about to blossom. Every night at 8, Willow would call me on video to check on the rabbit. Watching her coax the rabbit with a pout in the video made my heart itch. So while she looked at the rabbit, I looked at her. When I got lost in thought, I would unconsciously smile. As a result, now when I look at the rabbit, I also always show that kind of smile.
Big Orange looked at me speechlessly, comparing my smile to that of the silly dog at the neighborhood gate, which drooled Dan wagged its tail. Grinning foolishly at delivery people passing by, I was speechless. The sudden doorbell interrupted my thoughts of chatting with Big Orange. I thought it was Willow and opened the door with a big smile, which vanished the moment I saw the figure. Big Orange slowly walked over, its cat steps full of caution upon seeing the woman. Long time no see, the woman, wearing refined glasses, pushed them up with one hand and smiled. I rubbed my temples helplessly and asked, still alive. Her pretty face stiffened, and she gave a dry laugh. George, don't be like this, even though we broke up, we can still be friends, Big Orange me out. Bullshit friends, a proper ex should be like they're dead. I quite agreed with Big Orange's sentiment, but Anna apparently didn't get the hint. Seeing Big Orange, she smiled and bent down to hug it, before Big Orange and I could react. A white shadow shot out and kicked Ana's hand. Where did this spicy rabbit head come from? Ana's face turned red, and she grabbed the rabbit by its ears. I frowned and said, Anna, stop it, this is not your backup food. Anna suddenly got angry, laughing mockingly. I'm here to take Big Orange with me. Big Orange, are you crazy? Anna shook the rabbit. If you don't give me Big Orange, I'll take the rabbit, I said. Neither you nor the rabbit are going anywhere. For the first time in my life, I ended up at the police station, with a cat in one arm and a rabbit in the other. The policeman couldn't help but laugh. How did you end up bringing the whole family? I sat on the chair, forcing a smile, waiting for Willow to come over and sort things out. What happened? A policewoman asked as she walked in. The policeman said, well, a girl broke up but insisted on going to her ex's house to take his cat. Then she threatened to make the rabbit he was pet-sitting into spicy rabbit head. The cat jumped on her face and scratched several lines. Ana and I had been broken up for so long that she forgot Big Orange hated anyone taking his toes. Kies a flexible fat cat, you wouldn't he think it, the policewoman said, glancing at the chubby Big Orange and giving a thumbs up. Big Orange licked my hand, thinking, I, Big Orange, Scratch people regardless of gender. Willow rushed over, flustered. Just as I was hugging the two pets together, the rabbit had been very resistant to being petted with Big Orange. But since witnessing what happened with Anna, it was unusually docile in my arms. Willow saw me and called out, George. I looked up. Willow took a breath, quickly walked over, and bent down to look at my face. Are you okay? She asked softly. I shook my head, whispering, I'm really sorry. I didn't take good care of your rabbit, it almost got taken as backup food, and I made you come all the way here. Willow was stunned for a moment, then smiled lightly and said, No, I mean you. The police told me someone got scratched by a cat, and I thought it was you. It's okay, as long as you're fine. I awkwardly scratched my head and said, It wasn't me who got scratched. Big Orange never scratches me. Big Orange me out twice. What kind of cat do you take me for? Really, always causing worrying, the rabbit in my arms kicked hard, clearly displeased that Willow didn't show concern for it first. I said, you can think about what to eat later. I'll treat you. To make up for not taking good care of the rabbit, she bent down to sign the papers the police handed her. From my angle, I could see her lawn eyelashes and her beautiful profile. She said, do you eat spicy hot pot? I was stunned, she continued. I'll make you some spicy hot pot. It's really delicious. I nodded blankly. On the way out of the police station, we ran into Anna again. She cursed under her breath, then suddenly saw Big Orange in my arms, full of anger. Instantly, she put on an innocent look, miming zipping her lips. Willow hugged the rabbit tightly, also glaring at her with hostility. Anna didn't know her, only felt a wave of killing intent, and quickly left, after returning. The rabbit and Big Orange walked past each other without looking, each going back to their own bed. Willow washed her hands, tied her hair, and went into the kitchen. I wanted to help her, but she chased me out. I can do it alone. I laughed, afraid I'll steal your secrets. She shook her finger. No, it's because but I finish. I feel a great sense of accomplishment every time I finish. I think it's enough to be this good looking, but also so skillful. I clapped awkwardly and said, that's amazing. Big orange covered its eyes with its paw, thinking, you're just pampering her. Ana's incident was like a stone dropped into a lake, causing little ripple. On the contrary, my relationship with Willow seemed to progress at the pace of a pedal bike, 
If Willow occasionally came back early, she would visit the rabbit and bring some cat treats for Big Orange. After a few times, Big Orange looked at Willow as if she were its own mother. It even secretly planned to change its name to Liu Big Orange to show loyalty to Willow. I was speechless, lowering my head was in silence. I was contemplating whether to arrange a hospital visit. Dig Orange muttered, Tell Lily I might not be able to go out anymore. Master says he needs something from me to boost morale. After a few days, when Willow was no longer busy, she took the rabbit back. Big Orange's fur had also grown back, so I didn't stop it from going out anymore. It recently fell in love with Lily, a pure white Persian cat belonging to the girl next door. It went out early and came back late every day, falling asleep as soon as it returned. Busier than me. I was also very busy. Busy flirting with Willow. Willow, what are you doing? Taking a nap. How can you reply if you're sleeping? Half asleep. Willow, how about I pursue you? I'm a bit hard to chase. You say you're hard to chase. Okay, I'll block you. Willow replied instantly. Not hard to chase. Not hard to chase. Then I want spicy hot pot today. Willow replied quickly. Okay, bro, hey. Women. Just little tricks to please me, everyone. From now on, we go our separate ways. I finished work early today and ran into Big Orange fighting with a black cat in the community. After a few swipes from Big Orange, the black cat me out softly in surrender. Big Orange walked proudly. Flowers may fade, people may grow dumb, but my handsomeness will last forever. Enough talk. Master is here, seeing me. Big Orange's tail stiffened for a moment, then it trotted over. It's both softer than the black cat's, meow. I looked at it and rubbed its head. Let's go home. Your mom is coming over later. Big Orange. Meow meow meow. My mom. Willow. Big Orange meowed. Then slapped my shoulder with its paw. Its pupils shaking. When did you two get together? Ah. Uh, she really likes you. Ah. Uh. I was in a good mood today, so I didn't argue. Rubbing its back. The situation is just that. And we'll see how it develops. Big Orange. Wow, is this the linguistic talent of humans? So profound. Its tail brushed against my wrist. Dinner was cooked by Willow, and I fed the two little guys. After dinner, Willow was about to leave with the rabbit, I asked. Sorely. It wasn't even dark outside. Willow was startled, then lowered her eyelashes. The redness on her snow-white skin was very obvious. I grabbed my jacket. Let's go for a walk at the night market. Willow smiled lightly and nodded. Pretty. Pure and can coke. Recalling my dream, I blurted out, Hi, honey. Willow's eyes widened slightly, and her ears turned red instantly. Dig Orange stumbled out of its bed, looking at me in disbelief. I was speechless, as long as my attitude is good. It's never me who's embarrassed. I calmly put on my jacket and waved at Willow. Let's go, darling. Willow held the rabbit in one hand and took my hand with the other. Dig Orange, looking cool and proud, followed at our feet, I suddenly asked, do you eat broccoli? She leaned closer and said, broccoli stir fried with meat. I nodded. She blushed and said, yes, it was inconvenient for her to hold the rabbit, so I was about to take it, but the rabbit jumped down first, it landed on Big Orange's tail. Big Orange's inner voice roared, stupid rabbit, don't think I won't dare to hit you just because we have different fathers and mothers. The rabbit farted in its face. Big Orange was speechless and shouted, I'll make you taste my fists, big as sandbags, and three bowls of cat food per meal. I thought with a smile, you can't see the fists, but your head is indeed as big as a sandbag. Willow and I arrived at the apartment building. Standing below was a familiar figure, squinting at us. So, George, is this your new love? I remained calm. You traveled all this way just to get scolded. No need. Anna choked. Big Orange was like our child when we were together. Why can't I have custody? I frowned and asked, Big Orange, do you want to go with her? Big Orange meowed disdainfully, shaking its head vigorously. Do you have a GPS tracker? You don't seem to know your place, fearing it would shake itself into a concussion. I rubbed it and looked at Anna. Big Orange doesn't want to go with you. You were the one who said the cat was cute and insisted on keeping one. Then you said you were allergic to cat hair and didn't get involved. So I took care of Big Orange all this time. What? Now you're cured or just shameless. Anna stammered. I miss it. That's all. Besides, it's just a cat. I'll pay you for it. How much do you want? I was speechless and almost felt like hitting her. The willow squeezed my arm. I looked back and heard her say to Anna. 
When people treat you like a person, try to act like one. Okay, don't bother Big Orange again. Anus chest teeth. She was no match for Willow in temperament or looks and had already lost in terms of aura. She frowned and asked me, George, you're just going to let her talk to me like that. I sneered. I think what she said is quite appropriate. Willow continued, you're allergic to cat hair. Anna didn't get the implication and said, yeah, so what? Willow immediately picked up Big Orange, who was baring its teeth and claws, and walked closer to her. I'm not allergic. Big Orange was ecstatic. Mom. Real mom. So close. You're my only mom. The next day, Willow sent me a screenshot, showing a picture of a cat that looked very much like Big Orange. It was another Big Orange. A young girl's cat had died a few years ago, and she had been looking for a similar cat online, willing to pay a high price. Anna probably saw this post and remembered Big Orange. Willow, don't let Big Orange go out recently. Who knows what Anna might do? She had a point. But we didn't he expect the one to go missing would be the rabbit. Willow initially thought the rabbit had gone out to play with Big Orange. She came in holding the lettuce leaves the rabbit was supposed to eat that night. Big Orange heard the nose at the door, gradually crawling out of its cat bed. And we all stared at each other. Me? Big Orange, have you seen the rabbit? Meow. Big Orange. The dumb rabbit. No. I've been playing with Lily all day. I'm exhausted. I held Willow's hand to comfort her. It's okay. It might be hiding somewhere. I'll go look for it. She quickly said. I'll go with you. The area around the apartment and villa wasn't small, so just the two of us wouldn't be enough. Big Orange stretched and followed us downstairs, then sat on the flower bed and called over a group of stray cats. My second in command is missing. Go find it. In an instant, the place was filled with meowing. Go. Big Orange lazily waved a paw. The cat group disappeared without a trace. Willow and I were speechless. Shocked, we realized our rebellious child was actually a mafia boss. Willow and I searched through the nearby bushes and garbage cans, but didn't find the rabbit. Willow's expression remained calm, but her palms were slightly sweaty. I said, the property management office hasn't closed yet. Let's check the surveillance footage. We initially thought the rabbit was just hiding, so we didn't think to check. Now there were only 10 minutes left before the office closed. The property manager, a very approachable man, was on duty. When he heard about the missing rabbit, he immediately pulled up the surveillance footage for us. In the video, a woman in black was sneakily standing at the apartment entrance, chasing the rabbit around and even getting kicked in the face. Then she caught the rabbit. I gritted my teeth. Anna. Big Orange jumped up. How dare she kidnap my bunny? Where's my knife? Where's my knife? I quickly held it back. Calm down. Calm down. But the next second, I shouted, Anna, you idiot. If anything happens to the rabbit, I'll be the first to kill you. Kill them all. Kill them all. Willow quickly hugged me. Calm down. Calm down. Everyone has their breaking point. But we try to hold it together. The property manager and Big Orange both took a step back looking at me in silence. Knowing that Anna had taken the rabbit, we called the police. By coincidence, the same police officer as before responded. Anna was caught off guard and taken back without any resistance. I didn't break the law. Why are you arresting me? The police officer pointed to the rabbit in Willow's arms. Stealing someone else's pet is illegal. I sneered. Ignorant. Have you lost your mind reading those crazy posts? Anna's face turned red as she shouted. George. Big Orange looked disdainfully at Anna, its mocking inner voice ringing in my ears. Master may be brainless, but he knows to call the police. I nodded proudly. Wait, who's brainless? I held Big Orange's paw, full of affection. I've put up with you for too long. Big Orange, meow. Good Big Orange James High, suffering in silence. Stealing someone else's pet, if the value is low, is punishable by detention and a fine. Anna got a week in the detention center. Willow and I carried the frightened rabbit home. Big Orange followed us, looking dejected. Willow petted the rabbit, glancing worriedly. Big Orange, is it really okay? I had a cold expression. Not only is it fine, but it's also about to be a father. The girl next door had just sent me a WeChat message saying Lily was pregnant. Little MEI was well behaved and mostly stayed indoors, except for the occasional visit from Big Orange. So it was obvious who the father was. Willow was speechless, the rabbit was speechless, only Big Orange wagged its tail excitedly. Ah, my lily. And I could see my money flowing away like water. 
my rebellious child, making me work hard. I didn't dare sleep, not at all. Afraid that if I fell asleep, I'd have to work even harder. When I woke up, Willow was going on a trip again, so she dropped the rabbit off at my place in advance. She leaned into the couch next to me, looking a bit sad. Will you miss me? I cheerfully watched meme videos, answering absentmindedly. Yes, you didn't even look up. I looked up with genuine sincerity. I went to the hospital yesterday and had my love brain removed. Now I can mindlessly think about you. Dig orange gagged. Willow, however, pursed her lips and smiled, her snow-white cheeks gradually turning red, clearly pleased with my words. I stroked her face and said seriously, remember to send me a WeChat if you need anything. I can't help with small matters, and I can't help with big ones, but remember, send me a WeChat. Willow, dot thank you. I withdrew my hand. Satisfy. It's my duty. Big Orange peeked out of its cat bed, its big eyes reflecting Willow's figure. Meow. Mom. He's acting cute with you. Stay awake. Willow whispered. Dig Orange has been meowing a lot lately. Is it in heat? Once Lily has her babies, let's get Big Orange fixed. Big Orange looked bewildered. Meow meow meow. I thought you were my real mom. You're really going to take away my manhood. Cruel woman. Big Orange ran out of the cat bed, hugging my leg and cursing at her. I ruffled Big Orange's head, feeling the bond between them shatter so easily, so I said, makes sense. Set a date. Big Orange looked bewildered. Master, is this necessary? We're all tough guys, can't we talk this out? Master, don't listen to this cruel woman slander. She and her rabbit both like to play weak. Willow, with her eyelashes lowered, leaned on me, her voice smiling. I'll arrange it when I get back, I said. Whatever my beloved wants. Dick Orange went crazy. Evil concubine. Take my punch. As we entered the hottest part of summer, Lily kittens were born. Dick Orange was particularly agitated that day, swatting at the rabbit several times, and I eventually had to separate them. After a long wait, the girl next door came out looking apologetic. Lily has given birth, but the kittens, Big Orange's tail shot up. What about the kittens? I asked for it. And the girl hesitated before saying, why don't you come in and see for yourselves? Dig Orange rushed in first, then let out a sharp cry. Running out with teary eyes and hugging my leg, I was bewildered. Next to Lily were several weakly breathing kittens, their fur fluffed up from her licking black fur. Tear black fur. And the only other one was black and white. I was speechless, feeling like an 80-year-old man who had carried 60 buckets of water in the scorching sun to water crops, only to realize I had watered someone else's field. Willow said, if I'm not mistaken, it must be that stray cat from the basement. I reply, yes, between the two communities, there was only that one black cat. Dig Orange clung to my leg, barely standing. I patted its butt sympathetically. Life as a cat, wherever you fall, that's where you roast, back home. I gave Big Orange three cans of meat. It ate happily, then wiped its mouth. If you can't untie the knot in your heart, make it a bow. I later learned that it and the rabbit had teamed up to beat the black cat into a bow. Are you listening? I asked Willow on the video call. It had been exactly a week since she left for her trip. Seven days without seeing her felt like a week. Willow seemed to be walking, her connection unstable, causing the screen to jitter. I'm listening. I sigh. Falling in love with a woman who doesn't come home means waiting for a door that never opens. The screen suddenly shifted, and a cold light fell on Willow's head. Her nose had a faint layer of sweat, her skin more translucent and white, her eyes curving up, as cold and beautiful as melting ice. Only beauty remained, strikingly beautiful. Can you open the door for a woman who doesn't come home? My brain hadn't processed it, but my feet were already on the ground. Dig Orange woke up from the commotion, its sleepy voice floating to my ears. What's going on, master? Me? The one who controls your fate is back, opening the door. Willow threw herself into my arms. The rabbit, pulling a sleepy-eyed big orange, watched us from the doorway. I gently stroked the ends of Willow's hair with my wrist. She returned the hug even tighter, to people in love. Their romance is the world's greatest.